Morning year three, we're on Thursday's lesson of the week. Um, hopefully you all managed to finish your plans yesterday to do their warning story. And today you're going to write the first two sections. So this was my plan from the other day. So we were keeping the format pretty similar with the trolls in Iceland, but we were changing what the warning was and what the problem was. So I decided that trolls were hiding deep in the forest away from people. And they were warned not to be out in the rain because they were turned to tall trees. And then I said that once in this day, the trolls for an oak were out walking in the forest and they were looking for food. And then I said the problem would be that the first sees are tra uh, children climbing trees and wise stuck. And then oak and fir decide to climb the tree to save them. The resolution was that Fur and Oak saved the children, but the ending was that suddenly there was a crack of thunder and it started to rain and Fur and Oak turned into tall trees. So like I said, we were going to do the first two sections today. So the beginning and the build up. So I've just put a screenshot of my um, plan here. So you were asked to think of a group of trolls that were warned not to do something. And like I said, I chose that they were hiding in the forest and they were warned not to be out in the rain because they would have turned into tall trees. So this is what I've written for the beginning. On the southern coast of Iceland, near a small village, there once lived a band of trolls. They were huge, gruesome creatures who were feared by humans and hid deep in the dense forest. All trolls knew that if they ever got caught out in the rain, they would immediately turn into one of the ancient trees. So whenever the sun glistened in the sky, they would venture out to go and find food. So as you can see, this is only probably about four sentences long. So you can use this as a model, but change it to fit your story. So one, sorry, on the southern coast of Iceland near a small village, I actually swag bagged that from the original story of the trolls. There once lived a band of trolls, and then I've used some adjectives here to describe them. Now remember, a band of trolls is like a group of trolls. They were huge, gruesome creatures. So I've used two adjectives with the comma in between. Who were feared by humans and hid in the, sorry, hid deep in the dense forest. So again, I've got adjectives here, deep and dense, to describe the forest. Now, You've got to explain that they're hiding somewhere. You know, you had different places that they could hide or live. Some of you might have chosen the volcano or the cave. I chose the forest. And then you've got to tell the audience what the warning is. So all trolls knew that if they ever got caught out in the rain, they would immediately turn into one of the ancient trees. Now, your warning is going to be different to mine. It might be if they were ever out in daylight. It might be if um, they were ever caught out in snow. Whatever you chose in your plan, I don't know. And then what would happen to them if they got caught out? So I chose if they got caught in the rain, they would uh, turn into trees. In the original story, it was if they got caught in daylight, they would turn into stone. In some of the examples I gave you, it, would, it was that they would turn into a volcano or they would turn into a waterfall. And I've used an exclamation mark here because it's the warning. So I wanted it to be surprising. So, so you've got a conjunction. Whenever the sun glistened in the sky, they would venture out to go out and find food. So obviously I'm saying that they're going out because it's sunny. If it was raining, they wouldn't be going out. A bit like in the original story, they went out at night because it was daylight they weren't meant to go out in. So what I'd like you to do is look at your plan and do your opening part, just introducing um, where they are and what the warning is. So once you've done that, your next paragraph is the build up. Now it's said in your plan that two main characters were introduced and the setting was described. So I chose that it was a summery day and they were in the forest and I named the trolls fir and oak and they were out in the forest looking for food. So that's the reason why 
they wrote that if you remember in the original story it was a stormy night and um i can't remember the two the name of the two trolls but anyway um they were out looking for food as well i think they were eating fish so i've started this by saying one summery day two curious trolls called fur and oak were walking through the enchanted forest looking for delicious berries together when they decided to go a bit deeper in than usual to explore above the glorious sun brightly shone through the thick trees while the birds that just said chirp chirped harmoniously around them. In the distance, there were meadows of multicolored flowers with busy bees enjoying the juicy nectar. So your aim of this paragraph is to describe the settings of where they are and introduce the two main characters. Now, my setting is different to the one in the story. The one in the story, story was a stormy night, so all the descriptive language used there was used to create an atmosphere of a stormy night that was a bit scary, um, I've chosen for it to be a summer's day in the woods, hence why I've chosen um, positive adjectives and made the setting sound um, like a, a nice place to be. So let's just look at some of the language I've used. One summery day, comma, so that's my fronted verbial, isn't it, telling me when it is. Two curious trolls, so I, want, I describe them as curious because I'm saying that they go off into the woods a bit further to explore, called fir and oak. So that's the only way I've described them, is that they're curious trolls. Called Fair and Oak, we're walking through the enchanted forest. So I've described the forest. Looking for delicious berries. So I've used delicious and adjectives. So I'm telling the audience why the um, trolls are there, what their, their reason for being there is. Together. When, so you've got your conjunction, they decided to go a bit deeper in than usual to explore. New sentence. Above, and if you remember, we looked at prepositions, so they're front and adverbials, but they tell you where things are and it helps your setting description flow better. So above, the glorious sun brightly shone. So glorious to describe the sun. I've got an adverb here, brightly shone through the thick trees. Well, that's alliteration, isn't it? TT. While, so that's my conjunction. So why that's happening, something else is happening. The birds chirped harmoniously. So that kind of means, you know, um, mu like musically. So that's my adverb around them. In the distance, so that's my other fronted adverbial or proposition, there were meadows of multicolored flowers. So I'm just wearing the flowers with busy bees, that's the serration, enjoying the juicy nectar. I don't need lots and lots of description for your setting. Two or three sentences to tell me what the setting looks like would be enough. So in this paragraph, just to conclude, you need to say, describe the setting and, to, and introduce the two main characters. Now, things that I'm expecting you to include, you're just doing those two paragraphs today, are you are fronted and verbial, so it can be when, where or how, remember a comma has to go after them. I would like to see some adjectives and some alliteration. Again, if you're struggling for um, adjectives, you can use the online thesaurus. I'd like to see some adverbs and some conjunctions. I'm not asking you to include all these conjunctions. I've just listed these conjunctions here so you've got an idea of what you, what you could use. So just to confirm again, you're doing the first two paragraphs, the beginning and the build up. Please use your plan to help you and that is all you're doing today. Tomorrow, you'll finish the rest of the story off with the last three paragraphs. If you're stuck and need some help, you can message us on the blog, but I look forward to reading the start of your stories, guys.